it used to all be so simple, just go for an annual pap. But so much has changed with the cervical cancer screening landscape in recent years. We have new, more sophisticated tests that healthcare providers can offer patients, and even the guidelines around how to use those tests and how often to use them, that's all changed a lot too. Um, but we've got an expert here who's going to help us sort it out. I'm Fred Wine with the American Sexual Health Association, ASHA, and I'm talking today with Dr. Latoya Patterson, who's yeah. an OBGYN <laughs> specialist and a bona fide women's health expert. So before we get started talking about the new test and the guidelines and how that all fits together, I wanted to back up a little bit and ask you about the human papillomavirus, HPV, that is really what causes virtually every case of cervical cancer. Tell us, how does HPV cause cancer and how common is this virus? Yeah, so the human papillomavirus or HPV is very common. Um, it's a very common virus that you are exposed to during um, sexual activity. Um, and so it's a, technically a sexually transmitted infection. Um, and that virus can change your cervical cells and could over time make them abnormal and that could lead to cervical cancer. So I understand that most sexually active people at some point probably have one or even more than one HPV infection. I mean, is it really that common? It really is that common. Um, essentially, if you have been sexually active, you've probably been exposed to the human papillomavirus. That doesn't mean every time that you're screened for it, it will come up on your pap smear or HPV testing, but you've probably been exposed at some point. So let me ask you about that. What is the difference between what a pap test looks for and what an HPV test looks for? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so a HPV test is screening for the human papillomavirus. That is all it's screening for, for that virus specifically. The pap smear is looking at your cervical cells and seeing if there are any changes to those cells that could be related to the HPV virus. Um, and so it says, do the cells look normal? Are they abnormal? If they are abnormal, is it low-grade changes or low-grade abnormalities or high-grade abnormalities? Okay. So I mentioned uh, in the introduction that the annual pap is largely faded. Um, guidelines these days call for cervical cancer screening to begin at age 21 mm -hmm. uh, with a pap test alone for mm -hmm. every three years and then at age 30 there's an option to add an HPV test along with a pap as a co-test that's done every five years. Mm -hmm. Now there's a third option. This is really <laughs> what I want to talk with you about. Yeah. So last year, 2018, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force updated their cervical cancer screening guidelines, very influential, widely referenced guidelines. And they've added a third option called HPV primary testing or HPV primary screening. And here, you know, for women at age 30 or older, they're being screened for cervical cancer with an HPV test alone, not as part of a co-test with a pap. So, you know, that's a pretty big change. And yeah. and a lot of the women we've, we've talked to about that are asking us, well, they're, they're anxious about the prospect mm -hmm. of, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm, what do you mean I'm not going to have my pap anymore? I've always said my pap is tried yes. and true. So <laughs> yes. what do we know about how well HPV primary screening works as a training as a screening option yeah so the HPV primary screening works just as well as screening with a pap smear plus or minus HPV combined um, and so for those women who feel that they are anxious about it or not sure how safe it would be it is very safe because they're comparable um, and we know that cervical cancer comes from the HPV virus so as long as you are being screened in some way even with just HPV alone or as a primary, it's a great screening tool. Are there any advantages with this move to HPV testing being more prominent? No. I feel like, you know, they both work well. Both screening processes and guidelines work well, but with the HPV primary, you are screening for the virus that we know causes cervical cancer. So there may be some advantages to that, but again, I think both work really well for screening. So my understanding is that the PAP, the venerable PAP does not necessarily go away. So what is the role of the PAP test with HPV primary testing? Yeah, um, so with the HPV primary testing, you would still need a PAP smear if um, you have HPV, but it is not HPV 16 or 18. The reason that they took 16 and 18 out is because we know that those are 
the bad HPV. Those are the ones right. that can lead to cervical cancer. And so if you're positive for 16 and 18, we're going to go ahead and do further screening with a colposcopy or other testing. But if you are HPV positive, but not 16 and 18, we would do a pap smear at that time, which is the cytology, which is a pathologist looking at the cells to see if there's any abnormalities with the cells of the cervix. Okay, so with HPV 16 and 18, they're a special group, it sounds mm -hmm. like. So you, you said those are the bad HPV types. So those are the ones that are, is it fair to say they're more aggressive? More yes, they're okay. more aggressive and they're more likely associated with cervical cancer. I see. So they, you, they account for about um, somewhere between 30 and 50% of cases of cervical cancer. Okay, so a woman who's positive for one of those on an HPV primary test, she goes to colposcopy mm -hmm. um, versus one who has one of the less aggressive types. Yes. Can be managed more effectively with, with, a, with yeah. a PAP test. That's correct. Okay, all right, I see. Um, ahead of our conversation, we asked some of our followers on social mm -hmm. media, yeah. what would you like to ask Dr. Patterson <laughs> about HPV primary? Uh, I've got a few questions. Are you game? Yeah, let's do it. All right, I got a list, so let's do it. <laughs> so the first one is, I'm not comfortable with giving up the annual PAP and certainly worry about going up to five years between screening exams, especially if no PAP at all is involved. Is it really safe to go that long between checkups? Now, you address some of that, but yeah. this sounds like five years. Let's the talk about that a long time. Yeah, yeah, I get this a lot. People are used to the annual pap smear, or annual screening for cervical cancer. The reason that it was changed to space it out is because sometimes when you're testing every year, you're finding things that aren't really gonna lead to cervical cancer, but then you are doing procedures and treatments for things that aren't gonna become cervical cancer. So it may be more harm testing every single year versus spacing it out some. The reason that we are comfortable spacing it out up to five years is because in the U.S. especially, cervical cancer is mostly seen in patients who, number one, have not been screened, and in patients who have not been screened in the last five years. Okay, mm -hmm. so five years is because we know that we, you need to be screened within five years, but beyond that, you know, every year, every two, it's safe to space it out. Okay, all right. Um, if I test positive for HPV, does that mean I have or that I will get cancer? That does not. Um, so just by being HPV positive, it does not mean that you have cervical cancer or will get cervical cancer um, because kind of as you alluded to before, there's a lot of different types of HPV. There are the higher risk HPV, like 16 and 18, but there are also less aggressive HPV viruses. The test is only going to tell us if you're positive. Even if you are positive for 16 and 18, that still doesn't mean you're going to get cervical cancer. And that's why screening is so important. Exactly. You can catch it earlier. Exactly. See what's going on. Okay. Um, will I always have HPV? Is there any treatment for the virus? Oh, that's a good question. So there isn't any treatment for the virus. It's something that your body can get rid of. Um, when I'm talking to patients in clinic, I refer to the HPV virus as the common cold of gynecology, meaning you're exposed to it, your body can get rid of it, but you could have that exposure, it could come back again, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna get cervical cancer and having a cold doesn't mean you're gonna get pneumonia and be hospitalized. I like that. Okay. <laughs> so that's Thank how I think that. about yeah. it. <laughs> I might steal that from you. Um, next one, I'm in my late 60s and my nurse practitioner says, I don't need to be screened any longer for cervical cancer. Am I not still at risk? That's a good question. Um, so based on the guidelines, after the age of 65, um, we don't usually recommend that you continue cervical cancer screening if you are low risk, meaning you've always had normal pap smears, um, you're not engaged in any behaviors that would put you at risk for cervical cancer, because your risk of getting cervical cancer after the age of 65 in a very low risk group is extremely low and the risk of getting cervical cancer and it leading to problems or causing death or major issues is extremely low as well. Okay, all right. And does that maybe touch back to what you talked about earlier about the harms of overscreening? You just don't want to test exactly. too much or needlessly. Exactly. Yeah, okay. All right, and the final one, boy, we talk about this a lot. I had a positive HPV test and my partner and I are both wondering if the other cheated. It doesn't mean there's infidelity, does it? 
So it most of the time it does not. The only way you would know where you got HPV from is if you only had one partner and your partner only had one partner in a lifetime, right? So if you have had intercourse with anyone and your partner has had intercourse with anyone, even if it wasn't while you guys were together, they could have been exposed to the HPV virus. So it's when people are HPV positive, you can't really tell them where it came from. Yeah. It just was from a partner at some point. Um, so most of the time it is not related to infidelity in your current relationship. Um, but again, it's you don't really know. Yeah, when and, you were exposed, and this could, this could be a partner like really from a long exactly. time ago, right? Like exactly, back, it could have been your first partner, right? Wow. Okay. Um, and then you know, forty years has passed, and you have a, a positive HPV test. All right. Thank you for that. I really appreciate you for talking with us. It it listening to you, it's it doesn't seem all that complicated, but there's a lot of moving parts to it. Exactly. Getting them to fit together, you know. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, we have a number of videos uh, on HPV and really an array of sexual health topics. So check us out online. We are at ashasexualhealth.org. And also take a look at our National Cervical Cancer Coalition. It's the apple in my eye. Uh, NCCC is an ASHA program. Uh, this grassroots uh, volunteers in their communities. They, uh, they do a lot of good advocacy and education work. That is at ncccc-online.org. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.